Hey there fellow astronomers. Um, I just wanted to make a video on the low spec uh, spectrometer by Paul uh, Gerlich. Uh, Paul, I hope I didn't uh, mispronounce your name, last name there. Uh, fantastic kit. So I'm a total amateur astronomer. Uh, I have uh, purchased the uh, star analyzer, the SA100. I used that last summer. Uh, from Tom Fields at uh, RSpec. It's so much fun. It was a great introductory uh, to uh, spectroscopy, which I highly recommend for anybody out there uh, if you're doing astronomy and want to just, you know, take it to the next level or, or have some more fun. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I was poking around. I was going to get the star analyzer out again. Um, I actually bought Tom's, Tom's software and I was just poking around and I, and I, came across this low spec, which is absolutely fantastic. So this is available on Thing Universe. Um, I've got an Ender 3 printer. Uh, hats off to that Ender 3. It's 199 bucks from Amazon. It is so much fun. Um, but with that being said, I had never really printed, printed, you know, iPhone holders and a bunch of gadgets like that, hinges. It's, it's super fun, but I'd never really printed anything, uh, to this, uh, level of, of, um, tolerance or, um, complexity, I guess. Um, so I kind of did some searching and unfortunately there's, there's not very much information out there on this. Uh, there is a paper this last uh, June, I think June of 2019, by some astronomers uh, that sort of talked a little bit about it and that it, um, it uh, at least preliminary, has given great, uh, great results. Um, but it really, uh, I haven't found anything good on, on uh, calibration, on the printing aspect of it. Uh, so uh, essentially, I was just going to post uh, a couple videos. This is the first one that I'm just going to talk about the printing. Uh, the next one, I'll talk about installing the optics and and uh, maybe a little bit on the calibration and the last one hopefully on how this thing works. Uh, so let's jump into this. Um, as I mentioned I'm using an Ender 3 printer just printing this with PLA. Uh, I may actually get some carbon uh, the carbon fiber PLA and try that to just, just give it a little bit more stiffness but again this is the first go around. Uh, start with the, um, the main uh, case uh, this turned out beautifully. Uh, you do need to do some some sanding in some of the holes I found just to get things to to fit and we'll get to that. Um, otherwise this design and layout, hats off Paul, you did an amazing job. Um, this in the cover I printed at 80% infill uh, and a 20 millimeter or a 0.2 millimeter uh, layer height. Um, uh, everything else I just printed at a full 100% infill. I wanted it as stiff as possible. Um, the only couple little notes I'd say, if, if Paul, you did do this again, or if you ever were, were releasing this, I think something that would be nice, uh, this curl nut screw here, this is essentially just for your guide camera. And uh, I've just got a little right angle image or um, eyepiece here just for the fit. Um, but your guide camera is going to go in there and all that's for is just for locking it down. Um, I'm in the, the States, so coming across some of the metric stuff is sort of tough. That silly thing I couldn't find anywhere. I should say I could find it, but you could only buy a package of 50 or 100 of them. So it's not like I could find it at the local hardware store for three bucks and I wasn't going to spend 10 bucks and buy 50 of them or whatever it was. So uh, a 632 works just fine. It's really close. Um, I, I heated it up a little bit in the oven and, and, and then it pretty much screwed, screwed right in. So I did that and I'm just using a 632nd um, a bolt that I put on a little plastic cap for, for my thumb screw for that. And again, all that is is to, to lock down your guide camera will go there. Um, other than that, um, this was great. Again, uh, took almost 40 hours to print, 39 hours and 45 minutes, so it was by far the longest piece. Uh, the cover, this is actually the second cover I printed. Uh, this took about, um, I think it was 10 or 12 hours to print. Um, the idea with the cover is that there is then the inlay that you can print out the little letters, I guess, and like snap them in piece and glue them down. I printed the first one and couldn't get that to work at all. So I said, forget that. All I'm going to do is reprint it. And what I would do is um, 
on the in on the last three layers of the uh, lettering I would change the color to white and then I'd continue to print in black it's I was expecting it to turn out really nice except for in Cura I uh, incorrectly specified the wrong three layers um, if you're in Cura just so you know if you go under uh, ex uh, extensions post-processing modify g-code so again uh, extensions, post-processing, modify G-code. There is a add script there where you can then just say uh, change filament. And for this, again, if you're printing at uh, 0 0.2 uh, millimeter layer height, it turns out that you'd change it at layer 34 and 38. I think I had specified uh, 32 and 37 or something like that. And therefore I printed the nice white and then printed three more layers of black. Um, I am gonna reprint this. I just haven't had 12 hours of free printing time. So um, from a fit point of view, that fits perfectly. Um, no issues at all otherwise. So coming into uh, the actual build of this, um, your telescope is going to go right here. Uh, this is, I'm using a Celestron uh, uh, C11 scope, and this is just a, a standard adapter that I had laying around that fit perfectly. I did have to heat this in the oven and kind of work the threads in there a bit, heat it back up in the oven, kind of work these threads in there. So I can unscrew this if I want, it's pretty tight. This will get glued into there, and hopefully that's never gonna change. So that's a really, really tight fit. Uh, the CCD will go right here, did the same thing, heated this up in the oven, worked the threads in, back and forth, heated up, worked the threads, so this will unscrew, it is again tight. Um, this is a relatively tight fit again, uh, but that'll get glued in there. What I couldn't find, and somebody please um, maybe throw a comment down, I couldn't find anywhere that anybody said what the distance should be or the optimal distance from here to your CCD chip. So I assume the uh, uh, kilometer there will will um, uh, uh, basically have enough focus. I'm using a SBEG 8300 camera. Uh, I guess we'll find out in the next video or, or once I get to uh, to having all the optics installed if I found the focal point or if this is right. If it's not, I can unscrew this, put in a smaller one, or put in an adapter. Um, so that's pretty much um, telescope here, CCD will go here, guide camera here. On the back, uh, there is the slider. Again, this is for the uh, the CCD focuser. Uh, a note on this, uh, again, in the PDF, uh, Paul's got six millimeter tubing. I couldn't find six millimeter tubing anywhere. I could find it, but it was like either a set of a bunch of tubing you had to buy or you had to buy a whole bunch of it. And, and I wasn't spending $20 for stupid tubing. Um, I did actually end up finding it on Amazon, a couple uh, a 200 or I think they were 200 millimeter lengths. You only need two 55 millimeter lengths, um, uh, but it was delayed like three weeks. I don't think I'm supposed to get it for another couple weeks. Point being, uh, if you just go down to your local hardware store, this is just quarter inch solid steel rod. It was perfect. Um, if you take the uh, the middle black piece, I actually had to print this a few different times. The first time I printed it, uh, the six millimeter um, threaded holder, again, you can get that on Amazon. I had to buy a package of five, but it was pretty cheap, I think three, four bucks, something like that. Um, but when you shove that in, at least when I shoved it in, it like really kind of warped this and I was, I was worried that I was going to wreck something, so I threw it in the in the oven and then it squeezed in nicely, but it's still, I was worried about some other stuff. So anyway, I reprinted it. Uh, the, the best thing to do is just print it. Uh, again, in, I used a nine, uh, or sorry, a five sixteen inch drill bit and I just drilled a hole in there. So five sixteen inch drill bit, drill a hole through, that way it doesn't really matter what your tolerances was and that fit in there really, really nice or squeezed right in with a vise. Then take a quarter inch drill bit, drill out those two holes and drill out uh, the two holes for the support brace and that will fit in perfectly. It slides back and forth really nicely. I may put a touch of silicone on there. I haven't yet, but um, but overall that's, that's fitting pretty well. So that will go in there. Snap in there. Uh, some screws hold it in. And then essentially the cover will just snap on on the top of that. 
Uh, I guess the only other piece there, there was an uh, M5 80 millimeter bolt. Couldn't find that anywhere. Again, even the hardware store didn't have that or Lowell's, Menards, Home Depot. Uh, I did just end up buying uh, this little set off of Amazon. I think it was $6. It's all M5 hex bolts from uh, 60 to 80 millimeters, which I'll use and, and um, from, from my point of view, I can use those for all kinds of things. So that was money well spent. Uh, the thumb curl screw, screw, again, if you go on Amazon, there's a thousand different models that you can get. I actually bought a little package of them. Again, I think I had to buy 10 of them or something like that. But So, well, cost-wise, you know, I looked at the, the L-Spec spectrometer just for the grading is something like 600 bucks. I bought all of the optics and everything was about i think it was 560 bucks from thorn labs uh the the really tricky part was actually the slit you can only get that from uh J jubilean something like that from france uh it cost me 31 it's 30 bucks for the uh slit uh ring it's 31 dollars to ship it so i actually just bought two of them um, so it was almost exactly $100 U.S. for two of them and the shipping, um, 31 euro for shipping, whether it was one or two. So like I said, I bought two of them. Uh, that is the longest piece as far as a lead time. The stuff from Thorn Labs came in three days. Uh, hats off to Thorn Labs. How cool is it for a bunch of guys in a lab to uh, send all your stuff? And then in the box, you also get uh, a nice lab stack, snacks, treatment for humans with a bunch of snacks in there. I thought that was the most brilliant marketing I have ever seen. Um, moving on. So that's that. The uh, illuminator from Balder. Again, this is just all this is. is just a little red light if, uh, if that shows up. Uh, this piece as well as the threads for the, uh, for the um, slot ring. You have to print those at 0.12 millimeters. Again, I'm just speaking from the ender side of things. This was printed at 0.2. I printed a couple of them at 0.2. I could not get the threads at all to, um, to thread down. Uh, when I printed it at uh, 0.12 and I slowed it all down, I slowed down the print speed to from 50 to I think 20. I just wanted to really take my time. And uh, after that printed out, in fact, I just printed this last night, it like screwed in perfectly. So I was pretty happy there. Um, I will say there is a solid lip under there. So this piece, uh, originally my plan was just to basically, you can put this in and just, and it kind of snaps in. And, and literally I was just gonna snap it in once I got that. Um, but even once I snapped it in, I couldn't rotate it with the little tool. Uh, but again, printing it at the, the 0.12, really made all the difference in the world and this printed out nicely slides right in there and that's pretty much it for the outside uh, going to the inside components now the first piece would be the uh, the guide camera pick off mirror this has got two parts to it um, i'm not sure i did do some sanding on that there is a inner lip in there and that will slide in there but it fits really really firm i'm hoping it doesn't have to be that far out uh, i guess i will find out in the next uh, video again there's nothing that talks about how you actually cal cal um, calibrate this or align things uh, it just basically says well roughly put it about how it looks in the picture which was that sticking out about that much so yeah we'll see in the next video um, but basically that just pops in there and there's a couple little alignment bolts there that will pop in there um there is on the opposite side the focuser for your guide camera uh this little red ring there that'll pop in there this has got to be one of the coolest pieces i've printed out uh there is um it consists of as i showed earlier the um the wheel here your slits and uh, different slit sizes there. It's got them numbered. That will sit there. The ring screws it down. Then you print out um, the black holder. I had some warping issues with a couple of them that I had to reprint. Um, but there's actually a set screw, a spring, and a little steel ball in there. So if you can hear that. 
clicks right in place. That is such a slick little part, um, but that goes on there. The little cover will fit over the top of it and just three screws hold that down. And that's all there is to that. And that will slide in right there. That pretty much takes care of the upper part. As far as the lower section of it, there's the main pickoff mirror. We'll go right here. It snaps right into place there. Again, I haven't mounted any of the optics. I've got everything from Thorn Lab. That's the next step. Um, the, uh, uh, I forget what you call the, the lens here that basically uh, straightens all the light, and light waves out. Uh, that goes in there. I did have to sand that just a little bit to make that nice and smooth in there. Um, the focusing mirror, I have to say there are two of those, two different sizes. There's a 25 millimeter and a 30. It turns out that the 25 was on version one. You don't need it if you're starting this from new because you're just going to buy the 30. Um, with that, this little notch on the end, when I printed it, I thought it had screwed up on the print, but no, that actually is in there. Uh, it clearly was an afterthought because it went out from the 25 to the 30, so the clearance is just a little bit tighter between there, so that's why he had to cut that down. Uh, hopefully that doesn't affect anything. I guess my biggest concern overall on this is going to be what happens with uh, thermally as far as contraction and expansion and um, clearly you don't want to leave this out in hot sun or it's gonna like completely warp and at the tolerances we're looking at um, like I say I, I guess we'll just see how long term this thing lasts um, as far as the uh, the um, the um, reflection slit uh, grading was the word I was looking for uh, that's three parts uh, again all 100% infill. I printed this all at point two. Uh, it did go together really tight. And so what I did was I basically just put in there, push, push stuff in there and just kept kind of just working it with my hand. Same with this top. This was really, really tight. Um, I used a tiny bit of lubricant, just, just a tiny bit uh, right up on the top and on the bottom and worked it in. And after about uh, 15 minutes of just kind of working it down this thing is absolutely super solid and smooth as silk so this turned out really really well in fact i'm printing out another one of these just because i've got a 300 uh, millimeter or 300 lines per inch and an 18 uh, is that what it was 18 or 1600 whatever the other one uh, grating was so that will sit down in here uh, this will sit there and again, that will be adjusted from the bottom with that thumb screw. And I think that is pretty much, pretty much it. Um, so next video, I will install the optics. Hopefully everything goes well. Um, again, if anybody's got any tips, um, as far as the bolts to secure it down, you can get you know, a package of 10 of these on Amazon for a couple bucks. All of the miscellaneous hardware, I actually just had a bunch of kits, um, again, that, that I had purchased, but I just had from hanging out, but um, uh, all of that was pretty standard and, and no big deal. Uh, the little spring there, him, I did have a spring that I kind of tweaked and modified. Um, I, I started actually with just rubber bands, kids rubber bands bands from your braces. If you got any kids that are, have braces on, you can actually use those rubber bands. Worked pretty well as well. Um, but then I found a spring, so I changed it to a spring. So I think that takes care of it for this video. Uh, hopefully this helps somebody out on their printing and uh, we'll install the optics and uh, go from there. Have a good day, guys.